What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Let Dirt Fly YouTube channel. Today we're going to be installing a Moose RM5 plow system on this 2013 k and Outlander uh, 500. Now we're actually going to be selling this quad, but I wanted to build a little bit of a winter rig out of it. So um, we're going to be installing the plow, some heated grips on this thing. We're going to make it nice for somebody to use for their driveway, some work around the house, that kind of stuff. Now when I was looking at the instructions online, they're black and white images and you can't really make out what they're trying to say you have to do to mount up the mounting plate here. Uh, so I'm going to go over how to actually do it uh, in this video here, but I'm also going to show you the modifications you're going to need to do to the plastic here up front and some other stuff. So for this install, we're going to be using this mounting plate, which is part number 45010852. So this guy mounts right underneath here. It actually ends up using the um, same holes for the winch, uh, actually. So we actually had to get some hardware here. Um, I'm sure it was included, but because I got this second hand, I don't have the hardware. But um, we're gonna be putting some new bolts in for there, and then um, we're gonna have to trim the plastics a little bit. So we're gonna go over that right now. All right, so I got the quad jacked up on my Harbor Freight uh, lift table here. I got a lot of questions about that actually. Um, that's all it is. It's a thousand pound uh, lift table. But um, quad's nice and secure in the air. We're going to work on it here. So the first thing we're going to do, if we want to do this right and make it look neat, um, I want to take this plastic uh, front skid plate off here in order to mark the holes uh, to drill them. And how we're going to do that is we're actually going to use the holes from our mounting plate here because uh, this will share the same holes as the frame. And we're going to use these guys here. We're just going to line everything up drill our holes so this way these go through, make contact, then mount everything back up and we should be good to go. Now to remove this guy, uh, you're gonna have a T40 Torx bit. It's usually a 13 millimeter on the back side here. Same thing up front for your winch fair lead here. Uh, you're gonna need to remove that and we're also probably gonna have to end up um, removing the bumper. I'm gonna try to see if we can do it without it. There's two 13 millimeter nuts right up in here with bolts that we'd have to pop off. But I'm gonna try to see if we can swing the um, bumper up enough to get the plastic piece out. We should be able to, because this just kind of presses in here, hoping it goes that way. And so this way we can get that plate off, make our template and make everything look really good. So once you get your plastic out of the way here, you can see we have four bolts here. These are gonna hold your winch on. You might already know about these if you replaced your winch or installed one. But then you also have your two lower holes here that are um, that kind of hold this whole uh, winch support on along with your front skid plate. But now we're gonna have this big old bracket that's gonna go in here. That's gonna share those same holes as our winch. And back there, and it's gonna look just like that. Now. Looking at this, the way they kind of built this and designed this, it looks like everything's going to line up perfectly. Let me get these bolts out of right way first. So I don't have all the hardware because um, I bought this second hand and he lost some of it, which is no big deal because sometimes you have to get a little creative with this stuff anyway. Uh, this is actually just a Traveler winch, which I think is from um, Tractor Supply. But uh, works fine, it's a little 2500 and gets the job done. And let's see here. So once I have the bolts removed for the winch, there we go, that's gonna be nice and flush. All right, so technically all we're gonna have to do, and the directions weren't very clear on this or anything like that, that's why I'm kind of taking matters in my own hands. But we're gonna have to modify our plastic here a little bit. So basically we're gonna have to drill the clearance holes for these guys here, these little tabs that stick up. Um, now technically you don't have to go all the way through, um, just big enough for the bolt to go through, but I wanna make it this way, it's nice, nice and um, tight and everything, so I wanna have metal on metal contact. So we're gonna actually gonna be drilling, looks like a half inch sized hole um, in order to get this to work. The first thing I'm gonna have to do, I'm actually gonna have to run down and grab some hardware once I figure out what length I'm gonna need here um, to mount everything here. But uh, let me get these bolts out first so we can see what thread we're dealing with. It's probably metric. And then uh, once we figure out what we got going on up here, then we just had to drill our holes and put this thing back up in there and get everything mounted up and that's 
basically it. It's actually pretty simple, um, but I figured I'd make a video for you guys just to help you guys out because these directions were not that great. Sorry, Moose, they weren't. All right, let's go ahead and get these suckers out of here. All right, guys, so just got back from the hardware store. I got us some slightly longer bolts that should be just long enough to catch the threads of our winch, but also be long enough to get through our plate here. Now, unfortunately, my microphone wasn't working and I had to re-record all this, but what I went ahead and did was I en ended up drilling and marking. I'll insert some of the clips here of me marking everything. I basically set the mount plate on here and used a punch to mark my holes, and then went ahead and drilled them slowly bigger and bigger until I ended up finishing with about a, probably about a half inch to 9 16 drill bit. And with that, this thing lines up beautiful, like this. So um, our metal is able to come through and still make contact with the winch bracket and everything like that. And we're able to still retain a factory look and everything without having to chop the plastics up. I believe a lot of people have had to do that um, to get this to work, but I'm gonna try it this way because I think this will work and it'll work good. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually take our uh, skid plate, put it back into place, probably our final place, and we're gonna get the bolts lined up for the winch here, and this thing can start going back together. All right, so we're gonna get our plastic back in here. Like I said, I pulled the bumper out slightly to do that, but let's see, our holes line up perfectly. Now I'm hoping we don't have to, you can see this technically doesn't touch, hmm. Now what I'm hoping we don't have to do is actually cut this out like I thought we might have to do. Because if we did, we just have to just chop this whole bottom section of the plastics off, which I really don't want to do because I feel like that would kind of ruin the look of the quad. And if somebody wanted to pull this off for the winter time, they could still pop the screws out and just go right through these holes that we created to put the Allen keys back in for the um, for this style winch. But let's go ahead. Let's put the plate up in here and see what we're dealing with now. This is a little tricky to do by yourself because this thing is heavy. I mean, it looks like it should technically work. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is I suspected. There's a massive gap because of this guy here. Hmm. How do I want to go about this now? I don't think that's going to pull in enough. I did grab some longer screws, so maybe if I start off with some slightly longer guys, that might help us out. You see, even the super long screw does not bring us in enough to that point. We're going to have to literally mark the plastics here and here, like literally right at this line here, and just do a chop right across this way, this mounts up nice and flush. Cause we want to have nice metal and metal contact. We don't need this flexing and stuff like that while we're plowing or next owner does. So, shoot. Yeah, I didn't want to have to hack the plastics, but if anything, this gave me a nice guide to where I need to mark to cut this. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't make this stuff up, man. Uh, safety squints engaged. <laughs> sucked but the deed is done just got to get this one edge here a little bit I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mount the bracket first and then trim the plastic to be flush along the top of it because I feel like that's just going to be the easiest thing to do at this point. Unfortunately with how we had to do it, I'm not happy about having to trim the plastics like that, but tis what it is.
right, so I finally think I got the cover here where I want it, the old skid plate. Basically, ended up to make a nice snug fit like that. So basically, we got about two and a quarter inches on this curve here. Uh, you can make a nice solid line straight across, nice and level, and it should get you to where I actually have to take a little bit of a hammer, get a little tappy tap in the place here, like so. And it's nice and snug. Once we get the uh, winch fair lead back on there, that'll secure that good. So now we gotta get our bolts tightened up in here and then get our bolts in down there. And that'll actually finish the install of the plate itself. Um, now, one thing we're gonna have to figure out is the plow I got has one of the um, pulley assist deals on it where it actually takes a little bit of tension off of our winch uh, line here. So we're gonna have to check out and see how we can mount something to the bumper uh, to get that all working. So first, let me get the bolts back in for this, the bolts back in the bumper, um, wrap this all up, and then uh, we'll experiment with that stuff. All right, just like that, the mounting bracket is now on the quad. Uh, the only thing we have to do now is figure out the bumper situation with how we're gonna do the um, winch cable. But first, let me go down back and actually grab our new plow uh, so we can check that out and see how uh, we wanna do things. All right, guys, so it's the next day here. Uh, I went ahead and brought the plow up, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount it. But first, let's go over this plow and take a look and see uh, what this thing's all about. All right, so here is our moose plow. You can see, actually, like I said, I picked this thing up secondhand. It's in really good shape. The plow blade and everything looks like brand new. He only really used it on blacktop, which is awesome. So I kept the thing in good shape. Didn't get beat up too bad. Uh, the only thing I did notice, actually, is, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about if you guys are interested in this plow. Um, from his usage, this plate here was actually bent. So this is the pulley that's supposed to help make things easier on the quad and not tear up your uh, winch line but uh, it was actually really bent up. I actually had to bend this all back out and make this straight. And I'll show you what I think happened after we get it mounted on the quad. Let's go ahead, get it mounted, and then I'll show you what I think happened and why I think that got bent up. Now, I don't think that metal's too thin or anything because it's very thick and it was very hard to bend back, but I am gonna show you what I think actually caused the bend. It's actually kind of obvious and maybe Moose needs to think about this a little bit. So let's take, let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, so mounting up the plow is pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna pull the plow up and in towards our holes here. Ugh. She's a heavy plow, we'll say that. Now, my pins, like I said, are a little bit too small. I gotta get, go down and get the correct size here, but this will at least work for demonstration purposes. And I'd really actually like to upgrade these with some grade eight hardware instead of these, uh, the standard grade, because there's a lot of, if you're doing a lot of banging and booming when you're plowing, you don't want things to get bent up and then you can't get the pin out or something. So I am gonna do something a little different. This is just temporary. All right, so easy as that, the plow is mounted. It is kind of nice that this thing actually mounts to the front like this rather than underneath because that's a lot easier to hook up than crawling on your back and uh, trying to figure things out. Now all we have to do is our little wheel here. We just pull the pin out and the wheel drops out. We're gonna take our winch line here, and just push it through here, just kind of loop it, and then put the wheel in with her. And then the pin back in, cotter pin. And then, um, like I said, because I bought the second hand, um, I don't have, I don't know if there's something that actually gets mounted up here or not, uh, but I just use a nice uh, buckle here and strap. It's plenty strong enough to hold this thing, thing up. We're just gonna go ahead and clip this in to here. And just like that, everything is hooked up and ready to go. Now, before we go into anything else, I wanna show you what I think might have happened with the previous owner. So here's my hunch. So I think he might have had this mounted lower, which definitely gives this way more of an angle and makes it just way you're pulling this piece in really hard like that rather than having it up higher and giving it a little bit better leverage. But then also, what I, one thing I noticed is when you put this thing all the way up, like all the way, all the way up, which is really high, you shouldn't really need to go that high unless you're trying to like load it on a trailer or something. But um, it bottoms out on, on the plate here, but our winch can keep pulling. And I think probably what ended up happening was he might have went up high, too high with it at one point and um, just kept winching in or his winch stuck or something like that. Maybe the button stuck, froze up. 
who knows? But um, ended up going too far and pulling this guy back and bending it. So let's go ahead and cycle the plow. So you can see it goes very high, but now as we go higher, that can happen. <laughs> so that actually just broke, broke my buckle because it tightened up, but um, I guess it wasn't too strong. <laughs> so uh, let's just drop that down real quick. So um, it basically bottomed out right on here and it was a little too much for my nice little buckle that now broke, uh, rest in peace. But I'm guessing that's why that got bent. As you can see, it's a lot of tension on there. So I think we're gonna have to obviously upgrade our strapping situation here. But um, some kind of limiter on your winch might be a good idea somehow. Uh, figure out where that max point is, drop the plow a little below that, and maybe put something in line on your winch, um, just like a cable clamp or something like that. So this way it hits your fair lead. Uh, so this way it kind of acts as a stop. So this way it don't go too high and it'll save uh, on, your, on your plow and everything like that. It's not gonna bend it up because that thing is very stiff and I highly doubt just yanking on it like that is going to actually bend that uh, without some extreme force because you should have seen me trying to get that thing bent back into shape. So real quick, let me uh, go ahead and see if I can find another solution to uh, get this plow back in the air again. And then we'll go ahead and show how well this thing uh, rotates side to side. And that'll be basically it. All right, so crisis averted, got a new solution here, and I actually like this better. So I ended up using an old strap, uh, one that's not ratcheting type, it's actually the, just the kind that um, kind of cinches down on the actual strap itself. But uh, what I ended up doing is adjusting it this way right before the um, plow gets to its highest point. Um, the actual crimp connection here for the winch line actually hits this guy up here, so it can't go too high. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So that's as high as this thing can go. Now, although that does limit my height, um, it still doesn't keep the winch from still pulling on that plate on the bottom. So still adding something to the cable on the lower half that keeps it from going in too far and actually get, um, stops it at the fair lead would be the best solution. So this way you're just pulling on that clamp rather than actually yanking on uh, this guy here. So um, I'm just gonna put the plow up a little bit and we'll go over rotating it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but let's do it anyway. All right, that should be high enough. But basically we have our little lever here. You push it forward towards the plow and then very simple. You can just rotate. So get a nice angle. If you're doing like a long sweep, a little less, completely straight. And then same thing with the other side. It works out pretty good. It actually uh, seems like a good system. I do like how you can leave the plate on year round and it doesn't interfere with your ground clearance. The only thing I would say is it is kind of bulky in the front of the quad. And if you do any kind of mudding or anything like that, um, and you're trying to do a, like a very steep um, angle trying to get out of a mud hole or something, this is probably gonna get caught up. So what I would do personally is just put this on for the winter months. And then when summertime comes, I'd have a separate plastic piece for the front here. Uh, like I said, I think they're like 30 or 40 bucks um, to throw on for those seasons. And then to slap this on a couple months before, you can still ride the quad around all winter and not worry about um, getting caught on rocks or anything like that back in the woods. But then when it's time to mount up the plow, it takes two, literally like I think under a minute. Um, I was about to say two minutes, but it's less than that actually. Uh, just put the pins in, get this all rigged up real quick and you're all good to go. So with that, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate your support. Definitely give this plow set up a look if you're in the market for a plow. We also did a review of the Culpin plow, which I'll link right here. And you guys can check that out as well. That's more of a budget-friendly plow. This setup is much more expensive, but I will say, from the feeling of it, based off the other plow, this one feels a lot more heavy duty. But Seth has had really good luck with the Culpin plow. So definitely check these two out if you're in the market for a new plow system for your ATV. So with that, we'll have to catch you guys next time on Let There Fly. Have you forgotten where you were?